Hello Commanders and welcome in part 3 of the Chinese Empire series. Today it's going to be about the invasion of Japan. But before that, let's have a look about the coalitions in the game. So this is the, the African one and this is the European one. Germany, Italy, Poland, Finland and Ukraine. Well, this is look like a tough one. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the Mexican one, the American one, United States, Mexico, Brazil, Bolivia and New Zealand. Well, looks like New Zealand is a little bit far from them. This is India, Kazakhstan and Spain. And the other one is Algeria, Turkey, United Kingdom, Syria and Greece. Well, I can judge that the most important one for us is this, is this one, which is Iran, Pakistan and Ethiopia. Because you can see here that Pakistan has conquered all of India swiftly. And he, and he might be uh, a potential enemy in the future. So uh, that is the closest, biggest coalition for us. Pakistan, Iran and Ethiopia. And I need to always keep an eye on them and monitor their movements. Meanwhile, I need to fortify my land forces with the mobile anti-air for sure. I need uh, anti-air defense versus, I don't know, uh, strikers, gunships, etc. The invasion of Korea is almost finished. You can see that the blockade with the ships was 100% successful and we didn't lose any unit and any infantry during this invasion because we kept attacking from distance using the towed artilleries and the ships, of course. Here I am going to annex this supply city. I am short on supplies. I mentioned in the second part that we are going to go so low on supplies and that production needs to be boosted ASAP because supplies is very important uh, to be used uh, in the research, development of armies and also if we are going to make more support units, we need more supplies. Korea is finished and all of its lands has been seized, now remaining these two. AI nations and I already positioned my navy here near the uh, southern cities of Japan. By the way, the series is uh, before the update where Japan still had seven cities. Of course, after the update, Japan has only six cities. So here we are going to expect a strong version of Japan. Okay, the war on Japan has been declared. My ships has automatically engaged all of those land armies in those cities. Now we're only going to watch after this naval blockade. We are going to make sure that Japan is not going to get off his island and come to us because he is surrounded and in front of each city we are going to have a frigate there. The good thing here that we only need to wait until all of those armies they are going to be obliterated and destroyed. Later on we are going to enter empty cities with infantry. This is the most, most efficient way to invade an island. It's very efficient, surrounded with the navies, bombarded overnight, and in the morning you go and take empty cities with your infantry. 100% successful and without casualties, without losses. We did it with Korea and now we are doing it with Japan. Of course guys, here I am trying to teach you how to win a solo game. Uh, I am going to give you all the tips or the standard tips or everything easy for you to understand the mechanics of the game and to be able to, to get your first solo win all alone. It's not very hard actually. You see here that we are only using motorized infantry, stout artilleries and mobile ontiers and few frigates. So nothing very special. We are not using some high technology units or something. It's very easy build up. The most important thing and which makes a difference between a good player and an average player is how to move, how to make choices and most important how to pick your next enemy. This is very important in solo game because everyone is going to be your enemy. You are going to have different coalitions around you. Here we know that for now we have like five coalitions that are very strong. We are going to wait for them to destroy each other, but always, always at the end of the game, we are going to there are going to remain two or three coalitions available. So yeah, things might be complicated in the future. This is why we need to take our choices carefully. The cities of uh, Kochi and Hiroshima they are under bombardment for our frigates, also for Kuka. Uh, I am not going to use my land forces yet. I landed with one that has. 
Stout Arteries, because Stout Arteries, of course, they can attack from distance. I am uh, meters away from the capital Tokyo, Sapporo and uh, Fugata, they still has infantry and land forces there. Fukuka has been emptied. Still Osaka here has two motorized infantry. I'm going to use the infantry, uh, the frigates as well to kill them. And the remaining southern three homeland cities, they are totally empty. So now I am going to start advancing my land army and claim those cities. Of course guys, you always have to be the first one to attack. Why? Because whenever you have, when, whenever you are the first one to attack, that will give you always the upper hand to uh, surprise your enemy because he, you will get him off guard. He will not be prepared for you. If you are going to be in a defensive state and the enemy is attacking you, of course, he spent two or three days preparing himself for you. So yeah, it's going to be uh, a little bit complicated for you to defend. Yet, when you are going to attack, you will always have the upper hand. So as Milio does, I always advise to be the first one to attack. Defensive play is not very good. Well, looks like here Australia is facing some problems. He's being invaded by New Zealand and Mexico. A reminder that New Zealand and Mexico, they are in the same coalition. Well, this is bad because the Pacific Ocean is being taken from us. My first mission was to control all of the Pacific Ocean. But here the American coalition is on the move. This is the United States of America has already seized all of uh, Canada, he lost his city of New York, yet it was a successful invasion. This is Mexico, totally, totally active with uh, level 5 arms industries. So yeah, the Pacific and the American uh, coalition is going to be tricky for us. The only way as, Ch as China to be able to destroy that coalition is to have the naval superiority. This is why I started the research of the attack submarines. Attack submarines in high seas, they are lethal, strong and very good. Very good. Because now, everyone is focusing on cruisers, actually. In all of the games, whenever you see navies, you are going to see frigates and cruisers. To surprise my enemies here, I am going to try and use the attack submarines to be able to be invisible from cruisers, because cruisers, they do not have sonar, they cannot detect uh, attack submarines. So yeah, I'm going to use that for my favor. Also, the frigates, they are going to be used to defend my attack submarines from ASW helicopters and naval patrol aircraft. So yeah, the combination of frigates and attack submarines is uh, well proven and it's a very good one. Okay, now the direction for the capital. What China couldn't do for ages, now Meliodas is doing it. Invading Japan. We know in the World War II, Japan invaded China. And before that, several times Japan invades China. So here we are going to create the Chinese dynasty at its prime. Like it was the strongest in the region where the wall of China has been built. Here we are going to recreate the Chinese empire, destroying nation by nation, making a massive land piece. And here the last the last move is a checkmate. Tokyo has fallen and Sapporo is empty, it's going to fall and rest in peace, Japan. After the invasion of Japan, which was 100% successful and we caught our enemy off guard while he was offline and we destroyed all of his land armies. Now we are going to pick our next move. We are going to pick our next enemy. Well, I'm thinking of course that my next enemy might be Pakistan because Pakistan is active and I'd rather take down the active neighbors first. I always put priority the active players before the AI nations and the inactive players. So yeah, now I'm going to start mobilizing myself in my city of Lhasa. I built an airbase there to make things easier for me. And let's check out in episode 4 what is going to happen in the future of the Chinese Empire. See you boys and bye bye.